What is up everybody? It's been forever since I made a video. I think on the sous vide, the last one I made was, I was putting coilovers on it. And I think that was my first video too. And then we went and put coils on Colton's car. And we literally went a full summer driving these cars around, beating the shit out of them. And I never videoed any of it. I literally lost motivation on the whole YouTube thing. But now, as you can see behind me, I have the engine out of the car again and I have the intake manifold off the block and I'm getting ready to do some serious stuff on this thing. So I figured I might as well start it up again, get you guys to follow me throughout the whole process. So first thing I'm gonna be doing on the build is a complete, well, almost complete engine bay emissions delete. I'm not gonna be dropping the gas tank and taking the evap canister or anything like that out. All I'm doing is getting rid of anything in the engine bay because it saves a lot of weight, surprisingly. And to me, it's just completely unneeded. I live in Alberta, Canada, so we don't have any emissions laws or anything like that here that your cars get inspected for. So I'll show you guys right now, actually, everything that I am getting rid of. If you look at your intake manifold, or actually, it's kind of hard to show off because the engine's out of the car and I have everything disassembled. I wish I would have videoed the process taking the engine out of the car, but I didn't. I just got straight down to it. I can pull these engines in like anywhere under two and a half to three hours and disassemble them like to this point. So regularly on these STI engines, there is a big ugly air pump sitting here. I will go and grab it actually from over here and show you guys the whole system which is this. So your air pump usually sits right here, right next to your AC compressor and then your alternator and your power steering pump. So your secondary air pump sits on the front here. It's this big, ugly thing that totally takes up unneeded space. And if you're running a front mount, you're probably gonna be running piping down that way anyway. So you're gonna wanna take it off. So it consists of this front secondary air pump, these lines running down the side of your engine, which come up to these two air pumps here that have your barometric pressure sensors in them. This guy here has this hard line running down, which will connect to the back port of your head on the driver's side. On the other side, you will have a hose that connects to this air pump. This isn't exactly how they sit, but this is just for reference. You'll have this hard line down here. That hard line runs down your intake manifold out to the other side of your head, which is behind your up pipe on the back of this head right there, which this is an absolute bitch to get at you guys if the engine's in the car and if your up pipe is still on. It's a nasty job to do. So I recommend if you guys are gonna do this mod and delete, do an air pump delete, I would recommend doing it when you have the intake manifold off and you have, say, your exhaust off, your up pipe, up pipe off or your turbo off or something like that. If you're changing out exhaust, just do it while you're there. Saves 10 times as much time because it's just, it's just a nightmare to get at. Once you get rid of everything that I just showed, all of this air pump jazz there, you're going to put a block off plate on the back of your head here, and you're gonna put another block off plate on the back of the head there. The second, emissions delete that I'm gonna be doing is my purge valves because if you look here, I may or may not have busted this purge valve taking my engine out. Those are about 250 bucks from Subaru and I don't wanna buy one of those because that could easily go into a bigger fuel pump or something like that. So I don't wanna spend money on that. Then I have to get rid of this purge valve here and all of this rat's nest of lines here. That's gonna clean up the engine base so much more. You basically get rid of this purge valve here, this vacuum line here that runs down. You're gonna get rid of this vacuum line here that goes to this T fitting that goes up to this one, the one that goes to your turbo inlet, and also the one that runs down from this T fitting into the hard line. So right now I'm just gonna crack down on getting this rat's nest removed here of everything and then I will show removing that line on the bottom there and everything in the engine bay. Another 
other thing I should mention before we go any further with this and before you guys go to do this is you will need a tune after you do this because you're gonna be throwing check engine codes like crazy. The car will still run fine, but you will have a check engine light. If you go to a tuner, they can get the codes removed for you and you will be able to run it without a check engine light. It gets rid of that whole rat's nest here. Honestly, just electrical tape off these two plugs here. If you're running stock fuel line still, it's a lot of work to get this line off of here because it is attached by brackets to the other lines and on the bottom it is actually welded to a bracket right there if you can see it yeah right there there's a bracket welding all of them together so just put block off plugs there 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 and here if you're running the stock turbo inlet that's how you do a purge valve delete but i think the easiest way to do this is just get a really really long extension an impact with a 10 mil on the end you can run it in from the bottom here. There you have it. Another piece of EVAP that is totally not needed, I don't think. Whatever, let's take it out. So I got this hose vented into my fender. All I did was ran, or er, this blues hose here converts into this black hose. I ran it under my fuel line and just zip tied it to the little ground behind the fuse box there, just make it look a little bit cleaner. And then I zip tied it to the little vents in your quarter panel there. Now that the EVAP stuff's all done, other than this line here for my air pump, which once my block off plates come in, I'll be taking off that side here, put a block off plate there and right there. I guess we're getting to the point of the video where I'm gonna finish it off and I'm just gonna talk about everything that I'm doing to this build and what my power goals are and everything like that. For starters, I already got the block built before. The engine has about 30 to 40,000 K on it. I have Manly H-beam rods. I'm still on the stock block case. So the casing is still stock. It's still the open deck. It's not a closed deck. It's too tough IAG, what all these guys do. I'm still on the stock casing, which is a little bit sketchy running higher power, but we'll see what happens. I have Manly H-beam rods, Manly Forge pistons, 5 thou oversized King Racing mainline bearings. I have King Racing rod bearings. Still on the stock crank. I just got it uh, polished and jet washed when I did the engine. For my heads, I'm leaving them completely stock. They still are stock, but you guys are gonna think this is stupid because I already got the engine built once, but I have to put head studs in. When I first got the engine built, I didn't put head studs in the car, which was stupid because I asked the engine the shop that was building my engine to put head studs in. They put the regular rod bolts or the head bolts back in and I was pissed when I got the engine back, but Whatever, that's life, you deal with it, move on. So now I have to pull the heads off and I am going to do the 11 mil ARP head studs and actually OEM head gaskets. They're a three layer thick metal head gasket. And apparently, judging by all the forums I've been reading, the three layer metal head gaskets, the OEM ones are the best ones to run, apparently. So on high horsepower applications, that is at least unless you want to get your heads machined and stuff like that and run the IAG head gaskets that have the fire rings, but then you got to get a machine with the head gaskets and everything like that. And I'm just not 
getting my heads machined at this point because I already did all that work. So I'm just gonna pull it off, slap new OEM head gaskets in, head studs, and call it a day. So since there's so much to this build, I'm gonna be off going off a list on my phone. First step to this build, I am going to be running a Killer B oil pickup and baffle. Everybody knows Killer B baffle is the way to go. And oil pickup doesn't crack, you don't get random engine failure. Cobb three board elect or three board, three port electronic boost control solenoid. And obviously a Tomei, everybody knows you gotta run a Tomei on a Subaru or else you don't own a Subaru. Uh, just the Tomei cat back. Then I was gonna run the Cobb 1050X injector, but then I realized they wouldn't have the support for the power that I need or that not that I need, that I want. So I'm gonna be switching over from the Cobb 1050X. I'm gonna be running, maybe I haven't decided yet, the Dietzworks, I think that's how you say it. 2200 cc injector kit that comes with the rails and everything i'm going to be looking into that for my fuel pump i'm going to be running the aem 340 liter per hour fuel pump it's e85 compatible too if i ever want to switch over also going to be running the ets rotated turbo kit paired up with a garrett gtx 3576r so yes we're going to be running a big turbo on this guy for those of you that don't know, rotated turbo gets rid of this stock turbo. The up pipe's a little bit longer, sits higher, and your turbo sits rotated so that the charge pipe, or turbo inlet, I guess you wanna call it, comes over the intake manifold into your fender, and my filter will be probably sitting around somewhere there. The ETS rotated turbo kit will come with a V-band up pipe, a V-band down pipe. All the connections are V-band, which is super convenient. It's a lot better and seals a lot better than a three bolt kit or whatever. I'm gonna be doing IAG TGV deletes, get rid of these garbage stock TGVs that are super restrictive. I'm getting PRL air pump block off plates because I'm in Canada. It's a lot harder for me to get the IAG ones and it's an air pump block off plate. They're all gonna seal the same anyways. I'm gonna be getting the IAG three bolt up pipe connection equal length headers because they look like the most cost effective application to me they come with an up pipe but then my uh rotated turbo kit comes with a v-band up pipe so i'm not going to be running the ieg up pipe i'm gonna have to sell it or something like that i'm gonna be running the ets top mount or not top mount sorry front mount intercooler kit that fits up perfect with the ets rotated kit it's going to come with the tile q blow off valve and oh yeah, for wastegate, I forgot. With my rotated turbo kit, I'm gonna be running the Tile 44 mil external wastegate. And other than that, I think just clutch is left. I don't know what I'm doing for a clutch yet. I think I'm gonna go with an Xceti twin disc, like stage four clutch. So they're capable of handing about 550, 600 wheel torque, I think. And then, also possibly a rad. I might be getting a Mishimoto rad. I'm not 100% sure yet. I feel like stock is not gonna cool it well enough. So I might need to get rad hoses and a rad and everything like that. As for mods that I already have, my air oil separator is for a top mount intercooler. So I'm gonna have to maybe cut this bracket off here and then weld another bracket so it can sit in the middle in behind all my top mount piping. And then I'm just gonna have to run custom hoses to all my PCV and crankcase vent components. I think that's enough talking for today. Hopefully that emissions delete part was a little bit helpful for you guys. I know it wasn't totally in depth and I haven't put the block off plates on yet or cut out the barometric pressure sensors or anything, but I figured to give you guys a little bit of a rundown idea of how the EVAP system works in the engine bay, what lines are running where and everything like that. So I know this video was a little bit dragged on and kind of boring that I was talking about everything that's going into the engine, but it kind of gives me a segue into what I'm gonna be doing for the engine build. So with that being said, I'm gonna end it at that today. Thanks guys for watching. If anybody even watches this, I will see you guys in the next video, hopefully doing an install when my parts come in. Peace out. Yeah.